brethren, I pray you sing a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples to bind their kings with chains. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. So, hey, you know, first and foremost, we're going to be all under and go to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and we are the sons of Jacob. You know, we come out here to preach deliverance to the captives, to heal the brokenhearted, you know, to wake our people up and tell them to return back to their nationality in these last days, the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. Y'all are the, uh, the true chosen people of the Bible. Y'all are, are peculiar people to the Most High. Give me Deuteronomy 76. Somebody give me uh, Isaiah 40, 4 and 1. Read. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, so according to the Bible, the Most High has a chosen people according to the Bible, whom he have chosen to be a chosen people above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. So we're going to get you another verse that's saying the same thing. Because you know... You you know, they tell you in uh, church, you know, God love everybody, you know. We all God's people, you know, when he has a chosen people according to the Bible. Read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 1. Yet now, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen. And Israel whom I have chosen. And Israel whom I have chosen. So the Lord only chose one nation out of all the nations he made. And that nation would be the nation of Israel. You know, Jacob, his servant, Israel, whom he have chosen. The Lord never was in the beginning dealing with all these other nations. He's only been dealing with a, a, a Pacific people since the beginning of the world. Somebody give me second, give me second edges, Meech. Chapter 6. He only been dealing with his same people. Give me Malachi 3 and 6 real quick. Malachi 3 and 6. Because we know the Lord don't change. So, hey, if he had a chosen people, what we bring it out in the Old Testament, you don't just go to the New Testament and now he's for the whole world. You know, it's the same thing. The Lord don't change. So why do you think the Lord is switching up now on you? Read. This is Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. What? I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, talking about Israel, he said, ye are not consumed. Meaning, I'm still with you. He said, the Lord would not cast off his people. Somebody give me uh, Jeremiah 31 and 37 real quick. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 37. He said, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. We are not consumed. The Lord haven't cast off his people. You know, he's still dealing with his people. You know, he can't redeem his people by his son, Yahweh Shah, whom the word ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Read that. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 37. Thus said the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out. He said, it's a lot. He said if the, uh, the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth can be searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, said the Lord. So right, ain't nobody searched out the, uh, the heavens above. You can't even get past the first heaven. You can't even get past the firmament, right. you know? So how are you going to search out the heaven above? And you still can't even, and you can't even search out uh, everything beneath. You know, hey, once you get down to a certain point in the water, the, hey, that pressure build up. You can't go past a certain level. You can't search out the, the, uh, the, uh, the depths of the ocean or all the way beneath. So he said, if that can be measured out, the depths of heaven and the depths of the ocean, then will I cast out my people Israel. So, hey, the Lord never cast off his people. He never forsaken his inheritance. Give me uh, Psalms 9114, just a quick precept. Quick precept. So, right, the Lord, hey, he, 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 give me Romans 11 1. So, Lockie, just give me that one. Romans 11, verse 1. Read. This is Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. God forbid. Hell no. God forbid. The Lord haven't forsaken and cast off his people. He's still dealing with his chosen people. Read. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. All right, so Paul told you that the Lord didn't cast off his people. And he goes on to tell you, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. You know? 
So the Lord's still dealing with his chosen people. You know, it don't it don't switch up. The Lord don't change. Read that second edges, Meach. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter six and verse fifty-four. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So cunt, everybody can come everybody come from Adam, so we can agree with that, read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Also the chosen people come from Adam. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Right, the Lord made the world for the chosen people's sakes, read. Verse 56, as for the other people, as for the other people, which also come from Adam, also come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. They are what? They are nothing. Other nations, there are nothing. The Lord is only dealing with his people, the so-called blacks, Native American, Hispanics. If you're not on this chart, hey, you can't get in, you know? Ain't no being grafted in, ain't no being adopted in, ain't no spiritual Israel. If you're not Israel, you're not Israel, you know? Give me, um, give me Isaiah 40 and 17. Uh, uh, read that again. But be like, so like you, but be like a two spittle. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O oh Lord, behold these heathens, what? these heathens, which have ever been reputed as nothing. So they always had that reputation for being nothing. These heathens. You know, read that. Get the precept to it. Because they always had that reputation of being nothing. So we're going to show you another verse that the Lord is not dealing with these other nations. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. Are as nothing. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing. And vanity. Hey, and vanity. So they already nothing. Now he's saying you less than nothing. Hey, I don't know. Hey, he, he, hey you know, it's simple as that. How, how can't you uh, understand or comprehend that? That the Most High is only dealing with one people. You know, he said he's the God of Israel. You know, give me uh, Joel 2 and 27. He said he's the God of Israel, not the God of the whole world. You know, not the God of uh, Edom, you know, the God of Moab. He said he's the God of Israel. He said all the other gods of the nations are idols, but I am the true and living God. You know, we got we to gotta wake up and return back to our nationality, return back to our heritage, you know. Get everything we had taken from us and get all those things back. And, 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 raise, our, and, or, and raise and order our nation in righteousness. We here to build up a nation. We're not, we, we tired of being on the bottom of the bottom. Right. We're trying to restore a kingdom. He said, uh, give me some right 10 and 8, Meech. Uh, you can read that though. It's the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. What? Shall never be ashamed. We should never be ashamed that the Lord God that the Lord is the God of Israel, not the God of nobody else. We should never be ashamed in that. You know, we we, we out here showing uh, our people that they are chosen people. And they, you know, what about the white men? You know, what about the uh, African? What All about right. him? What about, what about yourself? You know, you are chosen people. I'm trying to give you, hey, I'm trying to give you what you uh, had taken from you. But you're not even acknowledging that you are chosen people. You're not even acknowledging yourself. You're worried about these other nations. And that's how it's always been. You know, Israel just following the ways of the heathen. You know, he said, envy thou not thy oppressor, didn't he? All right. And that's all we continue to do is envy our oppressor and follow his ways. You know, follow his customs. We want to dress and be like the white man. You know, we want to celebrate Christmas. Hey, what well, Christmas is a pagan holiday. You know, it tell you about Christmas in the Bible. Learn not the way of the heathen, you know? So why continue, why continue to be as these other nations? When you were chosen to be a special people, a chosen people above all nations upon the face of the earth. Right. The Lord said you are the salt of the earth. Everybody want to be you, but you worried about everybody else. Right. You know, everybody, you know, take it from your culture or your so-called culture, you know? Just you know. your so-called culture because this is your real, you know, your heritage. He said, this is your knowledge, knowledge and wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Right. You know? What you got for me? Sorry, 10 8. Yeah, read that. Because we out here trying to build up a kingdom. You know, we, we out here trying to, you know, establish our, uh, reestablish our nation. Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 10 and verse 8. Because of, so like it, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Right, we're waiting on that kingdom to be translated. We're waiting on the kingdom to be translated from one people into another. Hey, we ready to be back on top, back into our righteous estate. You still holding second edges, Meach? Make sure you still got second edges for me. We're trying to get back to our righteous estate, you know? Uh, 
Ooh, I just said something. Give me a second, Edge of 69, too. Read that first. Because we're trying to, hey, we're trying to get back our kingdom, you know? This is Second Edges chapter 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. For Esau is the end of the world. Hey, for Esau is the end of the world. If you didn't know, Esau would be the so-called white man according to the Bible. You know, this, we, in the, uh, we, in the, we in the latter days, you know? Esau is the end of the world. You know, this is the white man's society. They built up America and they got this kingdom by riches and deceit. By rape, robbery, and murder. Right. By rape, robbery, and murder. They're pillaging all the people. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of that. I mean, it's like you. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Jacob is the beginning of the world that followed. You know, a, a land, uh, uh, the world with, uh, with peace, with righteousness, with order established. You know, we're going to get all these other na other nations in order. There's going to be no more. It ain't going to be uh, thousands of whales washing up on the beach. A millions of birds falling out the sky and don't nobody know why. It ain't going to be none of that. You know, uh, it said in Romans, uh, for the, the earnest expectation of the creature is that the Son of God be manifested and then we wake back up and get put back on top. You know, roughly paraphrasing. What I tell you to grab? Go back to the second edges. Come on. Uh, six. And 50 years and 50. This is the book of second edges, chapter 6 and verse 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathens, which have ever been recruited as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Right, now these other nations, they are up above us and begin to devour us. You know, hey, you know, the white man will tell you that they love you. But we know according to the Bible, they always have to perpetual hatred. Hey, you know, I'd rather, hey, he said, I'd rather, he said, uh, I'd rather obey God than men, you know, roughly paraphrasing. We, 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 I can't believe what you say when the Bible says you're going to always have that perpetual hatred towards my people. And it's still being manifested until this day. We're still getting shot and killed in these streets by, uh, by the so-called, by the police officers, by your race of people, specifically. You know, it's still being manifested. Uh, being made uh, being made manifest before us. It's a lot. Thank you. The water. So right. Uh, read. Verse fifty-eight. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hand. Verse fifty-nine. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? All right, man. We was given into the enemy's hand. But why would we get into the enemy hands? Because we chose to go off. We chose to disobey the Lord. We chose to not to follow the Most High. Somebody give me Amos 3 and 2. Give me Amos 3 and 2 real quick. Amos 3 and 2. But that's why he uh, allowed these other nations to get up and above us. Because we chose not to follow the Most High. And these other nations know that when the Lord was not on our side, that they can raise up, rise up against us and, and overtake us and overcome us. But when the Lord was on our side, it wasn't nothing you can do with us. You know, go read about, a, go read about your history. You know, David slew the Philistines. You know, we country, you know, taking this, hey, this is our land. We want this, you know, this is us. You know, go read about that when the Lord was on our side. All the wonders and uh, the acts that he performed amongst us, amongst Israel. Read that. Ain't much there in two. But this is why uh, we was in our predicament anyway, because we chose to go off. Read. This is Amos chapter 3, verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So he said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Because the Lord only only been dealing with Israel this entire time. Bring it out, huh? said in Malachi 3 and 6 that the Lord changed not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You know, he had, he, the Lord haven't cast out his people. Read. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. All your iniquities. So the Lord said he was going to punish us for all our iniquities. And that punishment was us going into captivity. And our enemies raising up, uh, rising up against us. And we've been, uh, you know, in oppression forever and ever more. Was that it on that? All right, come. So go to, uh, somebody give me uh, Ecclesiastes. I believe 12 and 7. Or 10 and 7. Right, because it's like, it's like a role reversal. The uh, enemies being up and above us. You know, it's not right. It's not righteous. So we ready back. To, we ready to get put back in the righteous estate. Read. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses. Hey, so Solomon said, I have seen servants upon horses. Who are the servants? These other nations. When you read the Bible and understand these servants would be the other nations. But he said, I have seen servants upon horses. Meaning he have seen the servants or these other nations up, up, up and above us. You know, in their kingdom, you know, living out they, uh, they heaven. Living out they heaven. This is they realm. You know, this is, you know, they, this is they, uh, the dominion for, for right now. He, so he said, I have seen, uh, servants sitting upon horses. Cause these actually are our servants when you understand and read the Bible. These are actually going to be our slaves in the kingdom when the kingdom gets translated from one people to another. 
and the world get put back to his first estate. That's right. Mm -hmm. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. What? And princes walking as servants upon the earth. He's seen princes walking as servants upon the earth because we are the princes of the Most High. We're a nation of kings and priests, but we are working like, but we are walking as service upon the earth. We're the ones that went into captivity. We're the ones at the bottom of the bottom. We're the ones that's in the slums and the ghettos because of our uh, shortcomings, because of our iniquities. Give me uh, Lamentations 5 and 7, I believe. I believe that's what I want. So right, man, you know, just for us, you know, going against the Most High, hey, the Most High punishing us. He put us through captivity. You know, if your son go off and do something, he don't listen to you, it's going to be repercussions. It's going to be things that he's going to adhere to, you know? Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 7. You got a piece up? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. This the book of 2nd, it's like it. This the, the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, what? a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him, who have called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. Man, he said we are a royal priesthood, a royal nation. What's up, brother? How you doing? You listening? I'm listening. I'm listening. So what you what all you got so far? All I started to hear was servants being upon this earth that the other nation, right? Alright, cousin, so we're gonna scratch that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that you are the chosen people of the Bible. Teach First and foremost, so that you can fully come into this knowledge. So give me the army seven and six, somebody. Uh, and if you was listening, go back to Amos 3 and 2, Ock. So you got 7 and 6? Go back to Amos 3 and 2. And we're going to read that first. If you was listening, then you would have heard this. But I'm going to read it again for you. But really, go ahead and read 7 and 6 real quick. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people, what? above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yeah, right, the Lord has a chosen people that He have chosen to be above all people are upon the face of the earth. And you won't, hey, you won't go to your Christian church and hear that verse. You know, they'll just let tell you that the God is for everybody. Right. When according to the Bible, He has a chosen people. That's right. That He have chosen to be above all people upon the face of the earth. Right. That we equal, you know, hey, that's out of the window. That's not true according to the Bible. The Bible that everybody believes in. Right. You know? got that you were, yeah you got that so we already established that he has a chosen people then Isaiah 44 one real quick we're gonna run it back one more time just to show you who that chosen people is just another precept you know showing you that he has a chosen people keep that it's the book of Isaiah chapter 44 verse 1 bring it out yet now hear O Jacob my servant in Israel whom I have chosen in Israel whom I have chosen in Israel whom we have chosen so Israel will be his chosen people according to the Bible not the other nations. He only is dealing with Israel, his chosen people. The so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics are his chosen people according to the Bible. And we got to wake back up and turn to our nationality. But I'm going to show you that you are the people of the Bible. Read that. Amos 3 and 2. This is Amos chapter 3 verse 2. You only have I known of the families of, your, of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your inequities. He said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Talking to his chosen people because they was his chosen people. He was only dealing with them. He didn't know nobody else. He said, so you only have I known of all the people upon the face of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities, for all your shortcomings, for breaking my commandments. Because that's what happened. We broke his commandments. And now we're under these curses. So give me Deuteronomy uh, chapter 11 and verse 26. Give me John 7 and 49. Bring it out. Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A, a blessing, blessing and, and a curse. curse. All right. He said, I set before you this day. He's talking to his chosen people, Israel. I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Read. A blessing if you will obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. So right, he said, you're gonna be blessed if you choose to follow uh, the commandments of the Lord. And you're gonna be cursed if you choose to go the opposite way and disobey me and don't hearken and listen to my commandments and follow me. So we know Israel, you know, they went off. He said, I will punish you for all your iniquities, what I just read in Amos 3 and 2. 
So we know Israel went off. So now they have curses put upon them. Read John 7 and 49. And you can give me any curse. This is John chapter 7, verse 49. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. But this people who know of not the law are cursed. You remember he said, hey, if you don't follow these commandments, you're going to be cursed. So if you don't know the law and you're not following the commandments, what? What's going to happen? You're going to be cursed. So now we're going to go through the curses and show you that you are these people according to the Bible. And that these curses apply to us as a nation. The so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. We are the same people. But we was taught by our pressure that we were completely different type of people. That we differ from each other, you know? We... It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. All right, this is one of the first curses. He said, cursed shall thou be in the city. Who was cursed in the city? Us, as a people. The so-called blacks, Native Americans and Hispanics. The blacks, you know, we in the slums and the ghettos, along with, you know, the Mexicans and the Native Americans. We in the slums and the ghettos, at the bottom of the bottom. You know, you had the, uh, the Native Americans pushed on over reservations. You know, they came over here, the Spanish conquistadors came over and conquered, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the Hispanics. Done. Put the water, right? So, uh, and he said, curse should not be in the field. Who was the ones cursed in the field? Oh, hey. God. You said who? God. He said the God. Cursing, cursing the field? Yeah, I said, who was cursing the field? He said, curse should not be in the city. We understand there was us as a people. And he said, curse should not be in the field. So who was cursing the field? You said not us? It wasn't us? Yeah, it was us. Hey, there you go. Okay. So, right, we was the ones that cursed in the field. Hey, we the ones that was slaving all day, picking cotton, getting our backs beat in. And uh, along with our hey, brothers and sisters, the Native Americans and Hispanics, they was in slavery too. But they won't, they won't teach you that in school. Can they try to keep y'all separate from each other and keep y'all history like like y'all a whole different people when y'all the same people? You know, and back then, they, uh, you know, you got on the paper now today, you got a so called Caucasian if you're Caucasian. You gotta check the uh, black African American if you that. You gotta check this if you that. Back then, they was identified as Negroes too. That's color too. You know, we the same people, it's no different. You know, so they was cursing the city and, and cursing the field. Our people was. You got verse, uh, read verse 54. So this is uh, another curse. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. What? His, his eyes shall be evil, evil toward his brother. Another curse put upon our people was that our eye would be evil towards our brother. What that sound like to you? Killing hey, killing each other, you right. You know, some people say black and black crime. Some people say, well, not, not everybody say, but off top, say, hey, one of the, uh, one of the biggest things of our eye being uh, evil towards our brother, you know, is blacks versus Mexicans. You know, that's a thing. You know, I was uh, caught up in a situation like that at one point. You know, being in the world, a black versus Mexican fight, or you know, it's it's uh, it's it's very yeah, it was a brawl, you know, and it's like that because our eye, there was a curse that was put upon our people. It was our eye should be evil towards our brother. The Native Americans don't even like the uh, the Mexicans or the Hispanics. You know, our eye is evil towards our uh, our brothers. You know, we all think we different, you know, or the case may be, but we not different. We're the same people. Hey, come. It's a true, it's a true struggle right now. They like kind, but we're the same people. We're a chosen people. But he said, but these people that are, that, uh, but these people who know of not the law are cursed. So everything go, goes back to the law. We got to keep these laws. Because once we start keeping these laws that you commandments, then we'll be blessed. You know? Uh, let's speak before I continue. And toward the wife of his bosom. So not only would our eye be evil towards our brother or towards our own people, but now I would be, toward, uh, be evil towards our wife. You know, we physical abuse mental abuse we don't know how to deal with our woman now you know we just you know dog them and treat them like they some slut instead of a precious daughter of zion teach up continue and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave so not only a hey, we are our evil towards our brother and not our evil towards our wife but now our evil towards our children Speaking on our uh, in our communities, specifically amongst our people, the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, most of us grew up without a father in the household because there was a curse put upon us as a people. This Bible is all about you. 
you know, it's, it's, this is your history. This is your heritage. Now we're going to show you the main curse, though, to really seal it in your mind to show you that this Bible is about you. Somebody give me Deuteronomy 5 and 6. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. It's saying the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So if, if you know anything about Moses, Moses delivered the people out of Egypt, right? So when he delivered the people out of Egypt, now uh, we in this time where they at now, did he tell them that they're going to go back into Egypt? Or did they uh, stand for something else? Because they just left Egypt, so what's the reason for them to go back into Egypt? You see? So now give me Deuteronomy 5 or 6. I'm going to show you what Egypt means according to the Bible, what it represents. This is Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. From the house of bondage. Egypt represents the house of bondage. What's another word for bondage? In slavery, you know, basically, yeah, slavery. You know, in a chain gang, you know? We got brothers and sisters, I mean, brothers and sisters that's in the bondage right now, behind them prison walls. You know, that's modern day slavery right there. T Chuck! Uh, continue. Bondage. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt Again, with ships. He said, so the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, which means bondage, which means slavery again. With what? With ships. What? With, with ships. ships. What people you know went into slavery on ships? The you said who? The oppressors. The oppressors didn't go into slavery on ships. Oh, They're the oh, ones that oppressed somebody. Yeah, so right, we the ones that went into slavery on ships. That's the so-called right. blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. Right. Was Jesus. So we was oppressed as a people. We the ones that went into slavery together. So that's in the Bible, which you learned in, uh, you learned that in school. And that's an actual fact that's in the Bible, because the Bible is a true book. It's all about you. you. You know, you go to school and just only learn about that. What, what read the rest of it at? It's been right here in the, it's been right here in the book this whole time. Y'all know what they say. If you want to hide anything from a black man, put it in the book. It's been right here the whole time. Finish up. Re-oc. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, we're up. I spake unto thee. He said, so by the same way I told you he was going to go to slavery on ships, that's the same way it happened. Read. By the same way we were up, I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We never saw our homeland again. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. What? Unto your enemies. And to my enemies. Who were we sold to? And who would that be? Hey, I'll take that. The world, hey. <laughs> You ain't an Israelite, hey, you the enemy, you feel me? You know, hey, he said in Psalms 83, somebody get that for me, I'll take that. Go to Psalms 83, you can finish out the verse though, Thou shalt see it no more again, and that you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond man, for slave man, and bond woman, slave woman, and no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem us out of this captivity. You know, we still in the, in the hand of our oppression, we still in captivity to this day. But read that, because you said something, you know, you, don't, you probably don't realize how significant it was. But you said the whole world. That ain't you right. This is Psalms chapter 80, 83, verse 3, 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against it, against thy hidden ones. Right, they said they, they have taken crafty counsel against our people and consulted against our hidden ones, but for what? Because you know when you hold a council, you come together to discuss something, right? So let's find out what they were discussing, what they what they uh objective was, right? For they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, from being a, from being a nation, nation that the name of Israel may be no more remembered. The name of Israel may be no more remembers. That's why you didn't know prior to today that you was an Israelite according to the Bible. That this is your real nationality. This is your heritage. This is what you must return back to. You know, they said, come and let us cut a, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. All these other nations came together on a one consent to cut us off from being a people. For they have consulted together with one consent. With one consent, meaning on A. One agreement, one accord. You know, hey, God. this is the plan. Everybody stick to it. Right? They are confederate against thee. They are confederate against thee. These other nations don't like us. You know, they don't, you know, they don't really love us like they say they do. You know. 
it's, it's just all that act. That's it's right. A, it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't the truth at the end of the day. You know, we're not supposed to be uh mingling and mixing with these other nations. Somebody give me Sarai twelve and ten. Cause he called these other nations your what? Your enemies, according to the Bible. They are enemies. So give me Sarai twelve and ten. We don't supposed to be, you know, we don't supposed to be dealing with the other nations. We're supposed to be dealing with your own people. We're trying to get back to a righteous state. Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 10. I mean, it's like you. Yeah, chapter 12 and verse 10. Never trust thy enemy. Never, what? never, never trust thy enemy. You can't never trust your enemies. Because as soon as our people, the so-called Native Americans, trusted the white man, what happened? They took all of this. All right. And they was on a manifest destiny movement. Trying to keep expanding west. And keep killing and killing our people. Read. For like as Aaron rusted, so is his wickedness. So, so like as Aaron rusted, so does his wickedness. Meaning it's going to manifest itself. It's going to come right out of him. It's going to happen just like that. When you think he's your friend, when you think you can trust him, his true color is going to show just like that. Read. Verse 11. Though he humbled himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So though he humbled himself and go crouching, he said, take good heed of him. Cause that's what the white man did. They came over here and they humbled themselves like, hey, we want to learn how to do this. Can y'all show us this? And turned around and used it against them. And turned around and took everything. I like that. Let me have that. I like that. <laughs> hey, right. You're done. So that's what they did. You know, you can't trust him. He said, take good heed of him. And it's going to be like a... Uh, like a like a uh, looking glass, and you can see all together that his uh, rest haven't been wiped away. See, look, damn devils need to crash. <laughs> That's right. And they came and crashed America and took everything. You know, and, you know they gotta get taken out of the way. It's, it's about time, you know. So hey, so now that you know that you're an Israelite, what's required of you? What's required of you? Because, and I haven't even showed you what's required of you, but if you've been listening, it's been right there the whole time. So, what's the reason for us going into cat or for going through what we're going through? Hey, right. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hey, come on, hey. Not following the, hey, not following the commandments. So, right, hey, hey, in the hood he came off. And we didn't have to get the scripture, but we're gonna get the scripture out. Hey, get the uh, get First Corinthians 11. We're gonna show you that was the righteous thing, man. And the Lord said he's gonna make them a quick understanding. You know, some brothers they gonna be quick to understand this truth. Cause they gonna know, hey, they gonna they ain't gonna turn to the left or to the right. They gonna know that the truth is the truth. You know when you hear some uh, some BS, That's when right. just sound off. You know when you hear some stuff like that. But hey, when it's the truth, you gonna know like, hey, this is it. Hold on, like, hold on now. He coming out the Bible. He's showing this. Hey, this man not even you know speaking his own words. He's speaking what the Lord said. Cause this is all coming out of the Bible. He said at First Peter four and eleven, if any man speaks. The other speaker is the oracles of God. And that's what we do. We, everything I say, I can prove to you out of the Bible. We say I lean not on your own understanding. That's we're right. Trusting the Lord. So we trust in the Lord. We're not here leaning on our own understanding. So read that. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Bring it out. Every man praying, praying, and prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. All right. If you, uh, if you plan... And uh, and if, uh, if, if a man is prophesying, meaning the word is coming out, and your head is covered, you just under your head. So read verse 3 and show him where his head is. Verse 3, But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of every and the head of Christ is God. So right, your head will be Jesus, who the world calls Jesus. His real name is Yahweh Shah. That's right. And then, your, uh, and then his head will be the most high. So you have two heads. So when the word, when you pray, and when the word is coming out, your head must be uncovered. You, you don't see no brother up here with no hoodie over their head, because our head must be uncovered. But as for the woman, read. But every woman that pray or prophesieth with her head uncovered, this under of her head. Right, it's the opposite for a woman. So if her head is uncovered, she this under her head, which would be the man, the only begotten son, and the father. So a woman must have her hair covered, and as a man, your hair must be uncovered. Uh -huh. So, hey, the hoodie came off. That was the righteous thing. We didn't even have to get the verse out for you. It just, hey, it came right off. He said he was going to make uh, his people a quick understanding. The brother's understanding quickly. It's hidden the spirit. Hey, give me uh, Romans 8 and 16. What's required of him? Right, I got you. Romans 8 and 16. 
This is Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Bring it out. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That we are the children of God. Bear witness with your spirit that you are the children of God. Because you are the child of God. You are his chosen people. He's not dealing with the white the white man and the white woman. The Japanese man and the Japanese woman. He's not dealing with these other nations. He's only dealing with us. The Israelites, the chosen people, the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. So, right, you already understand that we, uh, what's required of you is to keep the commandments. Because the commandments, us as a people not keeping them, that's why we're in a, uh, the position that we're in today. So, right, it's time to wake back up and uh, return to the commandments. Somebody give me 1 Kings 8 and 47. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. Somebody give me Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. 8 and 47, chapter 47. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 47. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives. He said, yeah, if thou shalt bethink themselves in the land where they were carried captives. So this is the land where you were carried captive. You were, you were descended of the slave, of a slave, you know, of our ancestors, who was part of your uh, on slave ships. You were a direct descendant. God! So he said, uh, yeah, if they shall bethink themselves in the land where they were carried captive, meaning but think like, damn, who, 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 who am I really? Where do my ancestors really come from? Who are we? You know, instead of being uh, a simple, because the Lord said, how long you simple was with love simplicity. You know, they, they gave you a title, the black man. Now you got black culture, now you got all this, now you just being simple. They think that's where you really are, when it's so much more. So much more. It ain't no coincidence that you was, you know, brought up here in slave ships. It ain't no coincidence. It's all of the most high. Really? Yet, if they will bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captive, meaning remember who you are, read. and repent. What? And, and repent. repent. And repent. When you repent, you acknowledge your sins. You acknowledge what you didn't did. See, Chuck. And you, uh, you turn from the wicked ways and return back to the Most High. So we have to bethink ourselves, wake up, remember, and then we must repent, acknowledge our sin, and return back to the Lord. Read. And repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, we have sinned. We have what? We, we have, have sinned. sinned. Like I said, acknowledge your sin. We have sinned. You got to make supplication to the Most High. You got to throw up prayers constantly. Read. We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. We have, we have committed, committed wickedness. wickedness. committed wickedness because our people, we, we, we continue to follow the ways of the other nations. These other nations is wicked. These other nations don't know nothing about no commandments. That's right. They don't die without the commandments. You know, read verse 48. And so return unto thee with all their heart. All right, with all, all their heart. heart. You must return unto the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. Read. And with all their soul. In the land of their enemies, which led them away captive. And pray unto thee toward their land. Right, and toward right, their right. land, which thou gavest unto their fathers. The city which thou hast chosen. And the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou the prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Maintain their cause. So if you wake up and think yourself in the land, turn back to the Lord, make supplication and prayer, hey, the Lord going to maintain your cause. You know, he going, hey, he going, hey, that's the first step of you being accepted. You waking up to your uh, your nationality, knowing that this is your heritage. Waking up to who you are according to the Bible. So, right, hey, come here real quick, brother. So you can step over here real quick. So right, you'll be a hey, Judah according to the uh, you'll be from a tribe of Judah, uh, American Negro. What, your father uh, African American, right? So right, you'll be an American Negro. You know, you'll be from a tribe of Judah, other twelve tribes of Israel, a chosen people. I'm gonna show you who else came out of the tribe of Judah. Give me Hebrews seven fourteen. Teach, Jack, teach. So right, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Hey, you gotta remember that. And what must you do with being an Israelite? So and what must you do being an Israelite, knowing who you are now? Follow the commandments. Right. There you go. Hallelujah. You still got to close real quick? Okay, cool. This is Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that the Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake.